What is going on? You are watching and of course listening to Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition where we are here every Wednesday night on the Crowdcast platform. This is episode 559. I am your host, Steve V, alongside Cody Maurice Doggett. I didn't forget to introduce you this week. <laughs> so funny. Hello, darling. <laughs> Did you keep that in the last recording? I didn't. I edited it okay, out. Okay. So yeah, for <laughs> so insider joke, we had Lincoln who hadn't been on the show for a while. And Lincoln sadly was telling us about the passing of Salty Pretzel, which yeah. we were really, our hearts go out to him, Peter and the angel, which is now Salty Pretzel. And yep. after hearing that, uh, almost forgot to introduce you, Cody, <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> on totally episode fine. 558, but we got there and I edited it out like the magic <laughs> of a podcast. Uh, we are happy to be giggle here. today, which is all that matters, right? Exactly. I see some people coming into the room. I think I see DG. Hello there. I see some other familiar faces and names and we're really excited here i am still in puerto vallarta living living it up over here in the fun in the sun my last couple of days for a while here before i head back to the big apple on friday uh it's been a great trip cody i'm super happy also going to be happy to get back to new york because the weather's a little bit better over there so i'm excited you of course are sipping a margarita from the drive through in kansas Shout out to that I place. Did this to me the whole show. <laughs> well, Cody, so we little known fact. I, I swear we'll get into hot topics. I swear we will. But um, I, we were talking. I was like, "What are you sipping over there? Is it like a Dairy Queen?" And he says, "No, it's a margarita." And here in Kansas, you can actually go to this burger joint and go to the drive-through, which you had your mom drive because you weren't driving, and get and you can order a margarita. And you said the margarita is actually pretty good. But shout out to the Delicious. burger joint where you. You have your margarita. Hi, Spangles. And this is what the logo looks like. I was trying not to show it on the show. But hi, Spangles. Your margarita is delicious. And Dominique is fabulous. Every time I go through the drive-thru, it's the same person at the window. And Dominique. Like, yeah, Dominique, darling. Like Devereaux, honey. Devereaux. <laughs> it's a <laughs> dynasty moment. She's fabulous. She's so nice. And I told her she had boss energy today. And yeah, it was a great time. I always en enjoy going through with the Spangles drive through. Steven asked me, Steve even asked me if I had had the burger just yet. And I was like, no, I just go get the margarita and that's it. <laughs> I love it. Well, cheers to you and Spangles on this Wednesday cheers. night. We love to yeah. shout out. We love it when you shout out at us. And I wanted to, Nico at on Instagram, Nico Neuron. Nirand Zini, hope I didn't butcher your name, Nico, says, oh my God, saw the last fairy on Tubi. If you remember, I saw the last fairy, a film you can watch free on Tubi. I saw it the moment I got here in Puerto Vallarta. It's really good. He said, it was so good. Loved your recommendation. Please do more movie show recommendations. Thanks, Nico. And we do love to shout out to art and film and tv shows that we're watching I, i'm almost done with ripley on netflix which is really good Ooh. highly recommend that and there's a bunch more coming your way okay well let's get into some hot topics because there's so much to break through on this episode including straight white girls are coming for our community the gay slang and what word are they coming for well this was a tiktok slang that um etymology on tiktok is the history of word or word element in um known by adam alexic aka etymologist uh, etymology nerd he dived deep into how words impact our daily lives by doing the historical research for you know his online content well now based on his findings the lgbtq plus community is losing out on a particular slang word and the gays aren't having it what's the word drum roll please slay slay Ooh. i actually didn't use slay that much but i know you use it i know drag race it's always used all the time and jeremy i believe use it too apparently white girls are coming for this word and we're not having it did you use the word like i said you did and what do you think of white <laughs> girls coming for our slang 
Well, I can't go back on it now. You said it, so it's in the ether, and now it's fact. <laughs> Love yeah, it. Yeah, I used to use it. I use it. I still use it, and I, I don't think words go out of style for me. I was thinking about it today. I was listening to Joe Budden's podcast, and he was saying some words, and I was like, oh, I if I was on that show, I would take it back to the 90s as far <laughs> as my terminology was concerned. But I don't care. If we... We as gay people and as you know in black culture as well, which which is what the article introduced <clears throat> to the to the conversation, we are used to being uh having our language taken from us and 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 by the populace by society at large. And I think that that's something that, you know, it comes along with being on the forefront of culture. So I think that this is in the past. It's a compliment. It has, it is really. And I think that in the past, we didn't really get our credit as far as that's concerned. But I think now with Gen Z realizing that we are, it's it's not such a bad thing. They're more open about everything. And we are actually taking our power back and asking that we're be, we, to be recognized for our uh, uh, what we provide to the culture. And we're saying that this is ours. And of course you can use it, but give us credit for where credit is due. So I think that we've come a long way. Definitely come a long way. I mean, I'm just thinking of the word poppy. I use sexy poppy, Stevie for my adult content. And my former trainer who we've had on this show before and our other show of a certain age, Alejandro Terrazas, is wanting to be called right now Poppy. Oh, Alpha Poppy is his big thing oh, right now. Not he Alpha is Poppy. <laughs> Alpha Poppy. He's straight, but he is Latino, and Poppy is no is used in the Latino community, and it's like a form of endearment. But we've embraced it in LGBTQ communities, especially the gay LG or the LGBTQ communities have really embraced it like yeah. oh poppy and in a really good fun sexy way but it's always been in the community it's always been in the a word that was used amongst heterosexuals as well and we sort of adopted it but made it a little bit more sexy i think you know it just means that we got to get on to newer words and and slay maybe is going away but i'm trying to think of some other words that we've been in the past that have gone away that are, we're no longer using but caladet says slay bitch or you get eliminated is it's probably <laughs> something you would hear on drag race and queen b <laughs> that's queen b he's got queen b there so beyonce i love it up. okay queen <laughs> b. here we go exactly so caladet said it i didn't say <laughs> right exactly oh my gosh okay well we wanted to move on to these next two topics because recently Coachella was just happening and it's the huge festival, music festival that is, you know, everyone is there. Um, a clip of longtime friends were there, Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith, meeting up with each other after other, you know, with each other during the first weekend of this year's Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. Well, it's been going viral, then meeting up, because the video starts with Smith embracing Beaver from behind and having a cute little dance with him. Smith then joins the friend group Beaver is hanging out with, and Beaver gives Smith a kiss on the cheek. Well, it didn't fly so much with the internet because it set it ablaze with homophobic comments about this gay quote-unquote gay interaction between Beaver and Smith. Many also had the audacity to even compare this interaction to the recent claims against Sean P. Diddy Combs. What? And, you know, <laughs> as I don't know where they were going with that. And on a, re, on a repost of the video from At The Shade Room, comments included, this is the most Diddy's Diddy in that ever did Diddy. Hollywood is a weird place, man. When did grinding on each other become the new greeting of between men? Well, I, we have a lot to say with this, but let's pair it up with yes. a related story. Noah Beck, we didn't know who he was initially, but apparently he was it's an American soccer player that no longer is a soccer player anymore, is really cute, but has become an influencer. 
and recently clapped back at people who assumed he's gay for simply hugging a male friend. Well, he also was at Coachella. Apparently, that's the thing to do is to I mean, grab we your should be there, honestly. guy <laughs> friends. We should be there with a booth, right? <laughs> Next year. Come on. Um, we could grind up on all these guys, too. Right? Well, hello. T- TikTok star Noah Beck is having to deal with nonsense, according to the article, from people online who think he has a boyfriend because he posted a video of him and another man hugging at Coachella. Beck, who has had more than 33 million followers on TikTok, posted a video of him and his longtime friend Carter Gregory dancing and hugging at the recent first weekend of Coachella. Well... People were also accusing him of, is this your boyfriend? Really? Two men hug and smile together and that makes them boyfriends? Come on now. This is 2024. We're way past that grade one of homophobia. Um, These are... Here's the thing about it. I was at the gym here in Mexico, Evolution, that I love. And it is, I've said it before, it is filled with a lot of bodybuilder types, Mexican bodybuilder types. And they're all so hot and sexy. A lot of inspiration, a lot of testosterone, and I'm here for it. And today, I for the last two days, I've noticed this one guy who is coming in and he has a great body on him, great booty, but he has decided to hire this trainer. I'm making up the story, but I'm pretty sure this is a story. And okay. I'm pretty sure said guy is gay. I mean, you, my gaydar's off. He has booty shorts on. We're just going to go with that for the, for the sake <laughs> of this story. Well, trainer that he has is a guy I've seen since I've been working out at Evolution here in Puerto Vallarta, who is bodybuilder type, so sexy, really adorable. I have a gym crush on him, but I'm pretty sure I would bet my life on that he's straight. Well, okay. today, trainer was there looking sexy with his baseball cap backwards, and I was overseeing it. Well, the person that I know is gay came in who's working with this trainer and ran up to ran up to him and grabbed him with this huge hug Aww. and trainer hugged him back like okay if you're gonna hug me I'm just gonna hug you back it wasn't a big deal it was at the entrance of this gym nobody seemed to bat an eye it really wasn't that big of a deal and I just think yeah I would hug my former straight trainer alpha poppy and have not a problem with it at all and he wouldn't care either it's just like get over yourselves the last thing i'll say on this is coachella yeah go ahead ahead. i was gonna say would you call him alpha poppy as well when you hugged him i was calling him poppy the other day and he's like (laughs) just for the record it's alpha poppy but you keep saying poppy but i mean i knew what i was doing he corrected you okay so he he come on (laughs) it's like i get his mail at my apartment it's like i get to call you poppy yeah (laughs) and tease you It's just, you know, it's not that big of a deal to tease your straight friends like that if it's all in fun. And the last thing I'll say with it is this is Coachella. Coachella is with a lot of Gen Zers. There's a lot of non-binary people there. That group, that lot of people that goes to this festival are not hung up on labels like the rest of the world is it's a very freeing community of music and art and everybody in and ambitions are down it's not that big of a deal get over yourselves internet i am inclined to agree with you i love that all of these men can express themselves in, in an affectionate way towards other men i think it's beautiful and <laughs> i do <laughs> Especially in the age where, because I feel like anything that men do now, it it turns, they, they're labeled as gay. They could breathe and people will be like, why is that man depending on that oxygen? He's He must be gay. I don't understand. They should be so on. happy and privileged to be gay because in 2024, Boom. it's almost like you are you get extra points when you're gay. I mean, all the white girls are stealing uh, words from us. So I it must be a good thing to be gay. So, <laughs> but, and with Noah Beck, I think it's totally fine. I don't think that that is a, an issue for somebody to call him gay. Even though the guy that he was hugging, I looked at his Instagram and he looks gay. He's giving me gay vibes, but I'm not entirely sure whether he's heterosexual. But go back to my story with gay. the trainer and the, the that trainee. is totally, that is totally fine as well. Hugs are, 
perfectly fine. The issue that I'm having with the Justin Bieber story. Are we having an issue? Okay. <laughs> and Jaden Smith is that they hugged, right? And then they did a little smooch on the side. That's what I do with my and girlfriend. And a grind. <laughs> and a grind. I'm not, I'd even, I don't know if I would do that even with you. Maybe, maybe if I'm feeling loose and juicy and I'm, I've am i had a couple cocktails. On a Sunday and, at the Eagle, perhaps. That's right. That's right. I think I would do it. But I, not if we're, if I'm completely sober, I'm not doing that. I'm giving you a kiss on the cheek because yeah. you're my friend and it's a greeting. I could see all of that. But I do not think that that is, that, that's a little bit, too far and maybe it's some internalized homophobia maybe but let's play things. this out cody because they were at coachella a dance music you know club music's playing we've been at parties and where it's nightlife and you know inhibitions are done you're just kind of like having fun with your your girlfriends quote unquote it's not that big of a deal justin bieber's having fun with his girlfriend jaden smith <laughs> 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 Okay. Because I, I'm telling you, I, it might be something with me. Maybe I need to do some exploring. Maybe society has taught me that this that men cannot interact in this way without them being gay. Maybe all of those things are true, and they're both straight. But I don't know. Something is going off in my head that is saying this is a it's not a red flag. This is there's something that could be going on here as far as them being a little bit more intimate have something else that's going on and they you know sexuality is expected as a spectrum so they might be bisexual who knows who cares i don't really care that much yeah but i don't really care that I, much I either wonder. i think noah, noah beck felt the need because he's an influencer to come set the record straight but also remind people like can i not just say hi to my male friends yeah we're not going to hear from Jaden and justin because but they wait for have... the only fans though they they might put out a only fans together oh my god <laughs> Hilaire. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. So we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, let us know what you think. We are live. Put um, the, some comments in the comment section. We'll read it throughout the show. Moving on, this oftentimes we're talking about Grinder and we're throwing them under the bus because the last story we did on them was an AI boyfriend generated that you could do, but that you would also have to pay for. And we were like, no, thank you, ma'am. We are not signing up for this. This, on the other hand, I think is a positive spin on what Grindr plans on introducing. If you want to hook up internationally, and we know that everybody's back on the travel game, I'm going to Europe in, a, in about a month, six weeks, and I'm really looking forward to it. I might use this feature because the feature helps you ahead of time find out people internationally. It's called Rome. Like, mm. you know, not roam the city but roaming around <laughs> grinder is releasing the new feature today called roam r-o-a-m that will allow users to connect with others across the globe and you get to do it ahead of schedule so i'm going to be in valencia and lisbon in about six weeks and i'm thinking i might want to turn on rome maybe i want to look for some collabs this could be kind of fun it allows you in advance to see who you might want to hook up with and change your location to be in said country and users will be able to select a new location for their profiles for up to an hour Oh. You gotta get busy and do it. You can just keep it on for all night, allowing them to connect with and talk to locals in order to set up a future meeting. Rome is currently in testing in several markets and will be launched broadly in the third quarter of this year. Quote, Grinder is the connective tissue for the gay community around the world. And as we set out to fulfill our new mission, according to Grinder, I'm excited to provide a digital access to the important relationships, resources, and information that exist in so many physical Gaber Hood, said the CEO, George Arson. Well, I'm here for this feature, Cody, because I just think the more we travel, the more we need connections. And it could be a hookup, it could be a collab, but it could also be like connecting with people. We talk a lot about travel on this show and on of a certain age and our safety for our community. 
and how in certain places you really need to know the law, the lay of the land, and you need to know what's going on because you don't want to find yourself in compromising situations. And so this could simply be, I want to meet some folks and find out where's the the hot spots to go and where should I maybe avoid, but also for collabs, also for fun hookups. And I think it's a great new initiative that Grinders doing what do you say oh i totally agree i just wonder if they're going to have a the ai boyfriend in rome or on rome talk or a so real person they, they could fool us and to thinking that we're talking to somebody and they're actually we're actually talking to an ai yeah so. please don't merge these two components on grinder ceo over there Thank if you. you're listening that's too much. We don't want that. I don't. I have a problem paying for my real boyfriend. I'm not. I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to pay for no AI boyfriend. But this this function is really great. I will definitely be utilizing it. Um, I uh, <laughs> I do think that uh, when I use when I've used Grinder in the past, I would always change my location to right. somewhere else to see what's going on in the area. And this is just taking it a step further to where you can actually see who is checking for you in that area because, you know, you, you're putting your location as, as that other place and it's making uh, other people be able to see you and be able to appreciate you. So it's going to only improve connections. And when you actually go, you can have somebody to hang out with. You can have somebody that could possibly be a hookup that you can already, you can set up a couple hookups, maybe an orgy. Who knows? It's something that we can all hey, do hey. together. I'm, I'm here for this. I cannot wait to be able to utilize it. Here's the thing. Hopefully it lets those people in said country know that you're on Rome. I'm assuming it will. I think it because will. Because you would not want to be talking to somebody like I in New York wouldn't want to be talking to somebody, some hottie in Spain and thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get laid by this hottie, this Spanish guy, only to find out that he's not here for another month and, <laughs> and I have to hold it. But it wouldn't be a good tease to get me excited to oh, know yeah. that, you know. I'm excited right now. Yeah, um, <laughs> about this this infamous, you know, made up boyfriend that I have in Spain. <laughs> my yeah, AI, me too. My, not my but AI. Not, not AI. <laughs> We're not even, let's not even tease that. We don't yes. want that. So, yes. yes. Okay. I love that. And let us know if you're here for this new feature called Rome, R O A M, on that they're going to be launching on the Grinder platform. If you're here for it, if you're not here for it, what do you think about it? Also, let us know where you're traveling. You can also, if you're listening to this on playback, we want to hear because we really feel that travel is back with a vengeance this year. Yeah. Vacation vengeance, I'm calling it. 2024. We are back. We are going everywhere on the planet. And I want to know go. where you're going this year. This is the topic that we want to hear from you. So if you're listening to this when the show drops, let us know. I'll probably post the question on Instagram. We'll give those handles at the end of the show. But where are you going? We want to know. Staying on top. Kind of yeah, where do you want to go? A little bit. You want to get? I I want to go a bunch of places. I'm going to go to Canada. I think we're going to. Uh, you just want to get out of Kansas, is what you want. To do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to go to New Orleans, and I I just want to kind of interject that uh, Scruff already has a, something that's kind of like this. You don't get to move your location, but if you have travel plans, then you can put that you have travel plans into Scruff, and it will let everybody in that new city know that you're coming. You're going to be visiting there. So, it says a press really cool release. Function. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Alert Sorry. the press. I'm coming to town. Yes. We got a show. Yes. Dog and pony show we're putting together. Okay. Let's stay on topic. Let me put my glasses on for this one because I don't want to get it wrong. Because there's a new app that I discovered that is really juicy. It's called Bigger Blacker Book. And you guys remember back in the day, if you're of a certain age, everybody had a little black book. The little black book, if you don't know what we're talking about, I didn't really have it, but it was always used in reference to your hookups. Like, let me look up who I did, you know, two weeks ago. And it was <laughs> basically a book to let everyone know who was good in bed and who you could rely on. And of course, I'm sure people did it on their phone in various capacities as well. Well, there's a new app called Bigger Blacker Book, and it's exactly what you think you can keep track of all of your hookups and if you remember we've talked about you know austin wolf who everybody should know 
you know, porn star, uh, OnlyFans sensation. He started his only version of it. Yep. Uh, and Just he was asked recently how many, what's his body count? And by body count, not how many people he murdered. It's not Dateline. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Dateline <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> our version of what's going on over there in our community. But it was like an astronomical number. And this will help keep you track of your slays. See how I use that? Mm. And But it will also, here's where I think it'll be good, because it also can track your sexual health and activity tracking app for extremely friendly people, as they like to say. It's a new year, they say. We've been spending 2023 bringing you up on all the new app and support in 2024. But here's what you can do on You can even more details for friend profiles. You can expand support for SDI testing, so it can remind you when to get tested. Things like Doxy pep notifications doxy pep as you might know is the thing to take the antibiotic if you've known you've been sexually active for a period of time you would take doxy pep um, you can do things like medication logging to remind yourself on that uh, search for your friend list by friend profiles it can back up sexual encounters record who you met the specific activities you did like maybe there's some fetish that you did and you you want to remember that like who was this person and why did i like them well just look up there oh i was sucking on their toes and they had beautiful feet oh my gosh oh, perfect oh, sorry that's me that's what i put sounds in there. hot <laughs> and how you felt about it screenings and treatment keep track of the sdi screenings review recent interactions it can also be good too cody because you could share the app with people you've been with like look i've kept track with of all my sti I just got tested last week. Here's this on there. Notifications. Be reminded when you should take medications or get checked out. You know, what if you're on the monthly plan of your prep, Cody? This mm -hmm. could remind you of that. And of course, you could put it in your calendar like everybody else. But yeah. I just think it keeps your sexual trackings and everything to do with your sex life which is yeah. becoming a huge part of all of our lives i think oh, yeah. because of this show and so many others and why not do that what do you say to this new app are you going to download it it's free by the way definitely i'm definitely going to download it uh, i i do wonder if they're going to allow your hookup to see if you hooked up with similar the same people because that would be wild to me so that's just one thing that came to my mind as you were talking but i think this is stellar because it's slutty but conscientiously slutty slutty uh the root of this app is it doesn't shame people for their sexuality it allows you the tools to be a hoe or to be sexually adventurous. That's what we should say. <laughs> and responsible at the same That's time. That's what I was going to say. You can be responsible and be sexually adventurous. Because in the age of where STDs are on the rise across the board, this is a great tool to use in order for us to actually get ahead of this and to stop the spread of all these STDs. Because they are they, it's getting out of hand. And, you, and listen, when the next Gallup poll calls you on the phone and asks you how many sexual partners have you been with, or when your doctor says how many sexual partners yes, have you been there with, we go. and That's you never better. really know that answer, and you kind of look at them like with a dumb look on your face, you can say, well, hold on a second. Let me turn on the Bigger Blacker Book app. And I That's have right. been with, up to this point in 2024... <laughs> Drum roll, please. No, I mean, you can really do that. <laughs> Just say it. Just say it. I, don't, I, I haven't. I started inputting. You're like this. Carry the two plus I'm, seven. I'm starting to become a numbers guy. I never thought I was yeah. into math. And now this app is making me become a numbers guy. I look mean, at, look at that. I just think half the time you can't remember who did what. Well, who was that person? And you've got these weird contacts in your phone, like, you know, Eagle, I have like, you know, Ard uh, Eduardo, and then it'll say Eagle, which is the bar in his last name, and it'll say like, f fun Saturday night in there. And it's so random, and that's not going to really remind me of too much. In yeah. the app, I could say Eduardo, and now I'm going to start interviewing people. Everybody, they can't leave until I do a closing interview with the hookup for my app. Are you and gonna give them a survey? You're gonna be like, I'm, how, I might how give them a, our work. <laughs> I might do that, and it's like a closing interview, just so I can put it in Fabulous. the app. 
because let's just say I'm like, oh my God, I got to go to bed or I had too much margaritas. In the morning, I can input it into my app, but they've already taken my closing interview or like you said, the survey and we're good to go. And then I can, then when I go to my doctor or the Gallup poll, I am ready to go. I've got all the information you need. You want my, <laughs> you want my body count? Here we go. Let's Here open up is, the doc. app. I don't have to add. I don't have to subtract. I don't need to do anything. Come because, on. You know, David from the Eduardo from the Eagle didn't count because all he did was lick your toes. That's it. So. <laughs> or I licked his in the bathroom. Yep, there it I is. Mean, Ew, yeah. in the Eagle. <laughs> I've done that. I know it's wrong, but I did Girl. it. Girl, it's done. It's Maybe done. I'll it's put it in the, in the bigger blacker book. Maybe I won't. <laughs> but you're not getting access to it. By the way, there's privacy to it. They're not sharing any of this stuff. So you could rest assured. Oh, anyway, good. check it out. Bigger blacker book. Check out the app. So you can't compare notes with your with your hookup, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no. You can if you want to, but it's not pr- public knowledge. Not public. Let's just put that out there. Uh, okay. Well, I have been a little bit busy on this trip. I've been away for three weeks and part I've talked about getting on the OnlyFans circuit and I just started a Just For Fans recently. And one of the things that I've wanted to just share with you, some of Cody, is that the guys that have been on the, that I've collaborated, or collabs as they like to call them, they've got it down i mean everybody has their own thing so there's a club that i have out right now um on twitter you can look them up it's the redhead xxx and by redhead you might think that he has red hair or he's a ginger i thought Mm -hmm. that at first because we met at sniffies in la i had turned on sniffies and then met up with him no He's the redhead because he puts a red mask over his head because he doesn't want to show his face. And all his videos have this red sheer. I went to his condo in Glendale and it was like sheared out in red. And it was, he had the mask on, although I met, saw what his real face looks like. He made some time, he told me, put his face out there. We might get him on the show with the red mask and he might put a voiceover because he's hiding his voice a little bit, but he'll put some sexy voice on there and it will be a fun interview when we get him. But Uh, Can I tell you, he had three cameras going. He's an editor by trade. It was like I walked onto a set, but it was so comfortable. And if anyone's subscribing to me, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll know his work just by go on the redhead XXX on Twitter and you'll know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Because I was Googling it and I couldn't find it. Yes. Um, Today I talked about a masseur that if you're in Puerto Vallarta, check out on Instagram at Ivan Leif. Ivan, I-V-A-N-L-E-Y-F-F. Ivan Leif. He does a modality. He's a cancer survivor. He's gorgeous. He's stunning. He's built. He's a beautiful masseur because he combines all kinds of different um, tantra and Buddhism and uh, oh, all kinds of massage motifs to his Mm -hmm. repertoire the massage was amazing but then i found out he has an only fans so we collabed earlier today and honey it was a really he had his system down too cody he had lights camera action and we it's all based on like a massage moment and it turns into play afterwards but this is going to be good. These kids know what they're doing is the whole they point sure of do. my story here. I could go on with more. We'll have a little segment each week on some of the people that I've been collabing with and hopefully get some of them on the show too because I'm just so impressed because when left to your own devices, people are really creative and yeah. people. it's not the porn industry because the, we've heard horror stories often on not all, but yeah. sometimes when two people get to collab on their own because they chose to work together and then they create, there's some really creative people out there and it's made it very welcoming for me and I'm enjoying it. So, yeah. So good to hear. And, and people have such ingenuity and creativity and it, I feel like it hasn't been utilized until 
you get to create your own platform and really get to speak for yourself and what you want. So I'm here for it. I just went to the Redhead and his Twitter is fire. So I, send me the other guy too, because I want to see his too. Yes, I will. You have to ask Ivan to join his Twitter, but once you okay. do, you'll get it. But you can go to at, me. At, at Ivan Leif. <laughs> l-e-y-f-f and just check out he's a beautiful specimen of a man and i just we had it was really nice and i don't know what i thought this was going to be all about when i got into doing this work and for you know trying it out mm -hmm. i was a little nervous like you would imagine but yeah so far everybody's so professional and just i don't know dare i use the word nurturing especially Aww. if you're new to it like okay let me help you out with this and here's what we're going to do lay out the scene and i don't know it's just been a pleasure so far in many ways <laughs> pleasure in many ways in more ways than one in more ways <laughs> than one okay it's time to give some advice on this show which we love to do and by the way you can always ask us for relationship and sex advice you can simply we'll give our handles at the end of the show but you could also go to tagpodcast.com we're here for you whether it's relationship sex conundrums we are here for you all of us hosts actually are yeah. solicited or unsolicited and on a recent reddit thread they asked the question to what embarrassing lengths have you gone to for sex the person wrote found myself douching in the office bathroom today because I was going to a hookup straight from work. Okay. I was like, wow, how did we get here? <laughs> what ridiculous or mortifying things have you done just to get some dick or some ass? And this person wanted to know our stories. Well, come on. We got some stories. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go no, first? No, you go first. You, this is all you. you. <laughs> I was thinking about it and I know I've had a million of them, but I was telling you in our meeting earlier tonight that the one that come to, came to mind of recent was in New York, we have the Folsom Street Fair East mm -hmm. as opposed to the West one in San Francisco, the iconic one. But it's cute in New York and it's in the week before Pride in New York and it used to be by the Eagle on the west side in Chelsea and it's moved over to the West Village by what's the bar called? It's a bar in the west side and it's outdoors and I, I can never remember the name of this bar but it's in the West Village and the point being is it's, it's outdoors and it wraps around and one I, I went by myself one year and I ended up running oh, into... Oh, uh, no, it's, it's, no. it's No, it is... Okay. I don't Let me just remember. tell me, if you think of it, yeah, yeah. but yeah. not important to this story. It was um, the day of, and the, it's probably about an 11 a.m. to a 6 p.m. outdoor festival of BDSM, and there's all kinds of flogging going on and just hookups and people in leather. And I got there and by myself, and I was in the ATM line because everything was cash only, and I saw this guy who was checking me out. And he was really sexy, really cute. And I had this loincloth that I bought at Leatherworks and in Fort Lauderdale. And you just, it, it barely covers everything. It covers your dick. But if you get excited, the loincloth starts to raise <laughs> and it's easy access. Well, lo and behold, this guy's checking me out and I am getting hard in line waiting for five people ahead of me to get cash out so we can get our drink on. And he's looking and looking and it's plop, like beep 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 like <laughs> my dick's going up and up and he's looking down on it well he's in front of me and decides to like fondle me and grab it and he's like Ooh. dude i need this and i'm like i want you to have it but i also need my margarita and i also want my cash and what are we gonna do and he's like oh my gosh i have to work soon like i have to leave this festival soon i said what and so what did we do? We got our, I got my cash and we looked for where we could go. We went to a porta potty and did it. And it was a hot June summer muggy day. 
in a porta potty, but it was earlier in the day, Cody. So take that look I don't off know. your face. This porta potty <laughs> wasn't overused yet. It was kind of like think of like a Wonder Woman box <laughs> when she used to spin in. We went in there. Diana <laughs> Prince did, and he <laughs> Make sucked it me off. He sucked me off. I fucked him in this porta potty, and it was delicious, and it was everything. And then he wiped his face off at the end of it and said thank you that was amazing i want to see you later uh here's I my number and he me. ran to work <laughs> that was my most not desperate thing but we found a place to do it we didn't do it in the open air we didn't get arrested we did it in a porta potty what is your story and when you did it hangar bar uh, thank you or no, not hanger? hanger bar. It's, it's not. It's oh my gosh, we're not going like to get it. British bar. I'm just looking. I whatever. Was looking it, I'm like, I, we'll see. It's not even my favorite bar, to be honest. It's, that's why even, we can't remember. It. All right, that's it's called so, Rock Bar. Okay. Rock Bar. That's what it is. Good yeah, job. And Steve. I don't really that's, love I it. I don't begin with the R. I don't love <laughs> it, and it's going on record because they were kind of <laughs> douchey to me the last time I was there. They couldn't make a margarita. People, go on. I remember that story. Your drive-through probably made a better margarita than freaking <laughs> rock bar and they looked at me like i had two heads when i said a margarita and it came back like it was soda water and ugh, it was awful and i they're such we're not a we're, we're a dive bar we don't make mixed drinks i'm like you're fucking new york city you can make yeah. a margarita i, I went get to a margarita eagle. i went to the <laughs> eagle let me vent real quick i went to the eagle and told that story to three bartenders and they were like it's rock bar steve why were you at rock bar i'm like exactly that's why i'm back here at you the eagle true anyway i'm done and <laughs> I don't think we even need to go to into my most embarrassing story. <laughs> don't even go oh, there. Man. I feel like DG no, and I, I went there too with not great results too. <laughs> who's watching us live tonight. But anyway, Cody, go. Yes. Yeah, so my most embarrassing story will probably be when uh, I was staying with a friend and uh, I was in Florida which is already embarrassing. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, and I, I went to, I was staying with a friend and I, you know, I'm not bringing somebody back home to my friend's house. That's not something that I do when I go and stay with somebody's. I, I haven't done it at your house. So there it is. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Okay. I mean, okay. We're not going to go into it. <laughs> <laughs> when I brought somebody back to my own apartment, when you were in the other uh, room, mean, which isn't really a room, it's just kind of another area and you heard yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That happened. Okay. And I did bring somebody else there, but that we didn't hook up there. All right. So, uh, so this guy, uh, he hit me up on Grinder or Scruff or what have you, and he he asked me to hook up with him, and I said, of course, you're fucking hot, and he said, I don't have any place to hook up. Can you host? And I said. No, unfortunately, I cannot. Because also, it was kind of a hard and fast rule. Don't bring anybody back to my house. So I have to respect the person's place that I'm staying at. And I said, do you have any alternatives as far as where we can hook up with? And he's like, oh, we can do it in my car. And I'm just like 30-something at this point. And uh, I was like, ugh, a car? But he's really hot, and I kind of wanted a, a sex really bad. So I said, come and, come and pick me up. And he came to pick me up. In a Scooby-Doo van. <laughs> <laughs> Not Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I, mean, I think I told this story on the show before, but it I was a Scooby. Jinkies. It was a, Jinkies. It was a, a pretty small uh, van. It was, I think it was white too, which should have been a red flag for me, but I was horny. And then we went to the Publix, uh, <laughs> the, oh, the parking lot. Publix, Publix. grocery store. Yeah, we went to the parking lot in Publix and we banged it out in, pu in the pu in Publix parking lot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fun Listen, times, right? <laughs> we get creative. And when you're horny, you're horny. And if you're when really you're hot horny, for the guy horny. or the person, you will make it work. You know, nine times out of ten. I mean, we're not advocating here to do anything illegal here. But, I mean... In Fire Island, I've told the story before, I've done it on a rooftop when the house was filled with other roomies and mm -hmm. they they were like, what's going on on the roof? And they came out and looked at us and we were like, we're fucking, leave us alone. Yeah. And so <laughs> I've done it in a car in Palm <laughs> Springs because 
me and the other person who knew each other from LA didn't have a place to go to. He was driving back to LA. So we used a car. He was also six, three though in his sedan and we were making it work, but you know, you make it work, make it work to quote a popular Island. project runway moment in fire Island. I I've done it on the deck, the walking deck. I, we were outside of that, the, uh, the house where I was staying and we were just, we couldn't go inside or I forgot why exactly. Again, I think it was a roommate thing and we didn't want to be too loud. So we did it right there in next to the fucking deer and <laughs> they I were watching us. Love it. <laughs> and it was hot. I love having sex in the public. I've done it in, in Paris, in a little, in an alleyway, or like Ooh. an it was really an alleyway. It was just, just, an indentation in the 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 wall of the building and everybody could see us and we were just having sex right there in in paris in the alleyway and it was it was that was great i don't know maybe uh, i got a little cake okay cody so there's two stories we could do by the way we were supposed to have a special guest on the show tonight uh -oh. and so if you, <laughs> if you notice we might be a little fumbling it's because PR director didn't get back to us, but it's okay because we have so many more topics we could talk to you about. One of which, though, I want Cody to weigh in on. Do you want to talk about the Dateline one that I'm labeling or the Madonna-inspired music video that is another version of a story? You got two well, seconds. A Dateline because it's okay, more... Dateline timely and if we do it some other time then it's, it's not going to really work we, yeah think. guys we always have so many more, more topics to go through so don't if we don't talk about it today you're going to hear about it this one was i am kind of obsessed i think i've talked about it a little bit about dateline or 48 hours it sometimes helps me go to sleep i don't know what it is about me this one kind of falls into that story and i know it's going to be a new dateline or something mm -hmm. There's a Sean Cody model, former and gay adult film actor who has been sentenced for murdering an Alaskan surgeon. A Washington man was sentenced to get this 99 years in prison for poisoning murder of a prominent gay surgeon in Alaska on April 9th. And it's according to a statement from the state of Alaska Department of Law, Jordan Joplin, who was who is 38, was found guilty last year of first-degree murder and first-degree robbery in the case of his lover, Dr. Eric Garcia, at Dr. Garcia's home in Ketchikan on or around March 17th in 2017. Well, Joplin previously worked as an adult film star, and he was known as Zach on Sean, Sean Cody, Logan Cruz on Men.com, and Bromo and Rob Stonebridge on Randy Blue. And an autopsy showed that Garcia, who was 58, died from a lethal dose of morphine, methadone, diazepam, and lorazepam. Also on March 17th, Joplin took delivery of three shipping containers at the surgeon's home, which he filled with over two tons of Garcia's items and shipped to his own residence in Washington. So, sad, you know, it's it's... Eric Garcia, Dr. Eric Garcia, everyone is describing that he was the most gentlest, like talk about bedside manner. He was just this gentle doctor that did so much good for so many people. And he fell for this Joplin guy. And sadly, Cody, um, they he took advantage of him. But here's the thing. The judge, when he gave him 99 days in a day, that he's going to be rotting in a cell. He mm -hmm. said to him, this was so unnecessary. You, you were with somebody. He was giving you all this money. This is what the judge said. I'm paraphrasing. But he basically said, you had everything. Yeah. You probably could have gotten some money in a divorce. And it's like to go to these extreme measures, to think that you would get away with it. He went so far as to get a shipping container and after he had murdered him with all these lethal doses of these chemicals, he like took things like the Dr. Garcia's watch and money and get this, liquor. Like he wanted to make sure that he, he stole all the liquor and put it in a container so that he would have access to it later. This is a Dateline story waiting to happen. Yeah. I don't want to make light of it because people have said, like I said, Dr. Garcia was 
it's sad that he it succumbed is. to this and that his life is over. But this Joplin guy has ruined his life. I was telling you in our meeting that there's stories like this all the time. I was telling, recounting a whole one, which I won't, of a woman that was with a man that loved her dearly. He was a celebrity Hollywood hairstylist and they had children together. He adored her. Well, she met a, a very sexy guy, um, alpha guy at, the, at their club and they plotted to kill her husband so that they could get his life insurance. And it's like, but they were sloppy. All of them are always going to be sloppy. And in the end, it's like, was, was this worth it? Because you're not that smart. They're, you're going to get caught. And now you've ruined your entire life. And then these victims, like, it's so sad for the person yeah. that fell for him and the families. Yeah, it is really sad. I My heart goes out to Dr. Garcia's family because, like you mentioned, this the person could have had anything. that I, I've been in this type of love before where I would give this person anything. I would give them myself. I would give them money. They can have my last dime if they wanted to. And Dr. Garcia is somebody who had a, a tremendous amount of wealth and, you know, connections and things of that nature. I'm sure that... This person, what's what was his name again? Um, let me get this. Sorry, guys. Uh, Jordan Joplin. Jordan, yes, Jordan could have had anything. He could have, he could have been anything. He could have, if only he would have chosen the route of, of, of you know, being in in love or even giving himself over to love. He right. But what did we talk about in our meeting? What I said, yeah. it's insidious greed is what it always it comes to. All of these it stories. Really, really this is. is not the, they're not inventing anything new. It comes down to insidious greed. They and that, not being that smart, which made me giggle. And not I'm not laughing smart, at the situation, but, but they're not that smart. But greed 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 is the root of all evilness and mm -hmm. that's where they're and they go to these extreme it's like oh my god fine you're gonna ruin for now you're gonna rot in jail for the rest of yeah. your life he's gonna be somebody's and, prison bitch for real 99 years in a day that he's not coming out anytime soon but i love the judge though basically saying like this was so unnecessary that you did like you just it's like Oh my gosh, it, I can't believe it. Yeah, and you know what though? I've seen that a lot of these porn stars, I've seen a lot of stories about them like this and I don't know where or why it's coming from. And But I would like to delve a little bit deeper and see why or talk to somebody and figure out why, what the connection is between these two. Because I think that this is something that happens way too often and we need to definitely address it because... Trust me, especially these Sean Cody models, a lot of them get into some trouble. So I need to understand. Yeah. Part of me is like, I need to, I need to get to the root of this. Caledad watching us says, "How does everyone forget that the spouse lover is the first suspect in a murder?" True. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the story that I was telling about this one that I watched on that I was like, I was telling my sister because I was. I, couldn't sleep at five in the morning and I turned this on just to get me through it and I was like glued I was just like oh my god and you might be one of my other friends oh my god I told you and you need to do this together because I cannot if sometimes it's a lifetime moment <laughs> it movie. Makes me paranoid. you can find me often on a Saturday and I, if I get into lifetime I'm watching a movie and I'm like into it often it's like one of these datelines but yeah I just can't uh, Got it. You know what? Really Let's <laughs> right. Our hearts and you know go out to Dr. Garcia and his family, and yeah. Um, let's do thirst trap now, and if we have time, we'll do an advice because we cool. want to give thirst trap more attention. Thirst trap in the please do. Yeah. You know, last week we did Thirst Trap, and for the first time in a while, and it's expected, <laughs> it maybe wasn't the strongest week that it has been. <laughs> at, at this is like, what happened? <laughs> but this week, I think, made more, <laughs> made up for it more than ever, because Cody and I were like, uh, oh my Woo! goodness, <laughs> out of 15 gay porn stars on straight up gay porn, Zach puts this together, it's his site, 
who took the best photo. And a little tidbit about this segment. It used to be videos on Twitter and photos. And then he, Twitter made this thing, I think when Elon Musk bought it, that he wasn't able to grab the video anymore. However, I think it's a blessing in disguise because I don't think it's fair to judge a video also against a photo. Like, do the yeah. videos separately if you're going to do that and do the photos separately. Do you agree with me, Cody? Totally. 100%. Yeah, so so in, in a way... the playing field a little bit. Right. In a way, it's a blessing in disguise because now it's just the photo that we're, ju we're judging. <laughs> and it's 15 this week. Oh, no. We're the judges. We're the judges. <laughs> we're going to say who slayed this week. Hey. Because <laughs> hey, we only have a few days to use it before the white girls take it over. And... <laughs> <laughs> honey there was so many i'm just gonna shout out to like a bunch of them i mean i'll just go with the two that i chose i will okay. post this on tagspodcast.com okay, right. <laughs> episode 559 the two Chirac comes in i knew it at number one but seth kane i should put my glasses on comes in a close second but the one, the two that I was going with were Chirac and drumroll Marcos. He just goes by Marcos. Let Wait. me explain why I chose these two. I think in the end, I'm going to have to go with okay. Chirac. Okay. I was like, also, you told me that you, we could only pick one because I told well, you right. that so this week I, said, I wanted to pick two for sure because, good Lord, I can't just pick one from this group. Go ahead. What are you going to say? Exactly. So we said in a meeting, like we were just, and I said, no, Cody, you can't pick two as much as we want to, but let's pick our two, but then ultimately let's pick the one that we pick. I w was between Chirac and who I've met in person, and I took a picture with him a couple years ago at an, at an adult awards ceremony and he was gracious enough to take a picture with me. I think I'm going to go with Chirac because it's the sublime loose picture that he's taking a selfie of himself i believe in a mirror but it's the way he's leaning into a doorway it's the abs that are on point it's the body that's body body it's very languid and loose and if if you think of an s his body's doing a perfect s he's got that perfect beard and it's so yummy and he's got the perfect bush that makes me am i shaving too many of my pubes <laughs> <laughs> and it's the lovely hair that's gracing his bronzed chocolate brown body and it's his calves that are bulging out and his feet that have the perfect arch in a foot that you want to have or that i like to see and it's very languid and sultry and i mean i feel like it's like maybe he had sex and it's there's some buddhist stuff in the background and he's just like yeah i'm just gonna the rest of the night we're just gonna have some thai food and wine and maybe watch some <laughs> netflix and yeah i'm Chirac. Chirac gets my pick but the one close it. behind him is marcos and who goes that is by Mar your type yeah oh Marcos is sitting all wet and got his Caesar haircut and some chains and some tats and some trail of hair and he's not showing his dick and I think that's what makes it so intriguing too it's like oh, you really? want to know more and I'm living for it he also has a nice hand that he's showing up here and he's got some bracelets I love jewelry and I love when there's a lot going on in the tats and you just don't know where to look it's just all so sexy he gets my second pick but sorry Chirac gets my pick and by the way w please vote and, uh, on this because you, if you just go to the bottom you can just click and I'm voting right now for Chirac the vote goes in and Chirac is not at the top but he's doing okay who do you pick and why? So Chirac was also one that I picked, but ultimately I, Chirac was my second pick, but King Marcellus is doing the damn thing. He is laid back on a couch reclining. He's got earrings on and a pearl necklace and a bunch of jewelry on. He's got this humongous dick. So <laughs> he's chocolate and brown skin and he's just, his face is giving, his body is giving, and that dick is giving. And I, I wanted to do pick two people because 
Chirac was one of them, and he can. I figured that you would pick him, so that's why I. Oh my god! I know. I know. I, I knew it. I knew it in my soul that you were picking. <laughs> I just have a thing for Chirac. I mean, he's like. He's, and when I met him, I was almost like a schoolgirl. I was like, "Hi, would you mind taking a picture with me?" And he could not. He's like, "Sure, I'll take a picture with you." And I'm like, hey, thank you. I was like, he's a "No," I'm man. telling my friend, like, "No, no, turn the picture here, like over here." I was like shouting at my friend he was i was like calm down so i i figured and i put this in my notes that you know he can fuck you he can go over there and fuck you but afterwards he has to come over with me and king marcellus so we can fuck him so I that, love that it. was my okay. my three-way my my in my mind as far as all of these guys on the thirst trap are concerned because who this week and damien lou i i i can't i I went all this every week. So There's too many of them in this week. There's it's kind of crazy. Many. Khaledad says, what a week. Uh, Bryce says, Chirac for me as well. Seth Kane is close to me. Close to for me. Uh, Doug says, Sam Ledger and Seth Peterson. I saw them. Also great. Uh, Bryce says, King is my third. I'm a happy black. I am happy a black man is number one. Uh huh. King, King Marcellus is number one. Love that. And Caledad says the top in the uh can you read that? I don't the top in me wants to shout out to Eric Ray. Eric Ray was another one that I was like, oh, I want I've had such a crush on him. He's so fine. Uh also Sam Ledger and Seth Peterson. And of course Roxas Caleb makes me drool. But this week is about Jack Fetson and his big white cock. I need mm. to look at Jack Jack Fetson. Dude, no, I saw it and it's deliciously <laughs> huge and serving. Eric Ray, good lord. Damien All of Luke. it's kind of good lord. It's it's just like these specimen and they one all seem lovely another. too. I did in just to because one of them I did meet um Chirac and he could not have been lovelier to take a picture with me even my crazy state of fanning out. He was certainly lovely and, you know, accommodated my crazy moment as a fanned out queen. And thank you so much, (laughs) Chirac. So, you know, sometimes you don't know, like, are these guys nice? No, they are. So Chirac seems very nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This has been amazing. Um, Yeah. I'm signing off from Puerto Vallarta. I'll be back in New York, though, next week. Yay. I love both homes. And you can always follow my co-host, Cody. By the way, he's got a single. If you haven't heard us mention, it's called Talk About It. (laughs) You can get Talk About It wherever you download your music. So spotify Ooh. apple music um uh, but of course follow him on instagram he's a life coach follow him at kmd coaching follow his personal account at mr maurice follow me on the gram i am underscore steve v go to my twitter at tags podcast where you get a preview of my new just for fans or my only fans you'll see what i was talking about in that segment i'm going to try and do that segment if there's something interesting to share i will share who i've been collabing with as the kids say not slaying but collabing and (laughs) you'll get a little piece of it so go to at tags podcast on twitter all those links for what i'm mentioning adult content not suitable for work are there thank you everybody for joining us live tonight we really appreciate it It keeps this show moving and you're our third co-host so we really appreciate that and in the meantime continue having hot hot gay gay sex lovely